oh. discussion begins, I guess, with this. We're gonna... Today's oh. discussion begins, I guess, with this. Yeah. We're going to do this, and then we're going to look at the... We're going to look at also the post, the third-party tools post. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that. Is it a long one? Jesus Christ, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. this is fine. We'll look at it. I'm going to read through it. I'm going to tell you my thoughts as we go through that. Because let me just let me just preface this discussion by saying I have a very strong opinion when it comes to I don't this type of stuff. Because coming wow. from a World of Warcraft. coming from a place where you essentially you have to use add-ons, and, yep. and I know again, always some rando comes up. I don't have to use. I never used add-ons. I did fine. And it's like, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, dude. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I get, I get tired of listening to people like that. So if you're that person, I actually had one guy in my guild that says he doesn't use DBM integrating. Though, this guy was legit. He was so fucking good. And he played like, uh, on during Nathra, he played Warrior. Then during uh, Chains of Domination, he played Priest. And he was killing it. And he, like, he got like uh, 2100 on both of his characters. Or 2400 even on one of them. Uh, in the arena, Mythic Raider. Really, really good player. And he claimed he's not using add-ons. Now... I don't have a reason not to believe him. Everyone was using it, so there was no shame in saying that he doesn't. And he didn't come off as someone who's uh, who's bragging a lot or like he's like, oh, I'm better than you type of thing, right? So I didn't have a reason not to believe him. But either way, if he wasn't, man, honestly, like this guy was really fucking good. Person, do us all a favor and shut the fuck up. Nobody believes what you're saying. And everybody knows that if you're not using it, then your raid leader is using it or you're looking at logs or you're yeah. doing some whatever. Doesn't matter, okay? That, I agree. You might not be using add-ons, but you're using add-ons by proxy. Great leaders calling out mechanics that are about to happen. You don't need to know that they're happening, but your raid leader will call them out, so. Regardless, right? Regardless of all that, it's like I'm someone who came from that environment where you essentially are expected to use mods like DBM, and if you're in certain more Hardcore raiding guilds are expected to use weak auras and download the weak aura um, import or export, whatever. Import the weak aura data for raid and for each boss. That make things even easier. Those of you don't know what DBM is, it's a, a mod for World of Warcraft called Deadly Boss Mods, which is essentially uh, something extremely similar to what you see here, which I might bring up later. Basically, it gives you like the timings of the abilities when they're going to be happening yep uh it tells you where to stand so like on here die on left blue uh it tells you you know pull downs of everything it's, it's and it, it basically tells you way more information than you'll need and some people might be like well what's the problem of this right what's the problem of these add-ons the pro problem is that console players can't use them the problem is that add-ons can basically simplify mechanics to an extent where the developer then starts feeling the need to make more and more complex yep, mechanics which the add-on developers then feel the need to make more and more complex add-ons to simplify yep. those complex mechanics and it's it's just a never-ending war where the players are constantly losing uh, particularly newcomers because newcomers will then be expected to just install a million add-ons just yep. to be able to effectively raid because if you don't install those add-ons, you know, the mechanics are going to be so complex because the mechanics are designed with the add-ons in mind that yep. it's going to be a serious problem. This is why, you know, me coming from that environment and then raiding in Final Fantasy XIV was incredibly refreshing because I don't need any of that. Same. Like, give you guys an idea. I, at this I point, still have UI add-ons, progressing obviously. through P4S and... You know, it's, I'm, not, I'm by no means I'm like oh god tier raider or anything no, like that. Right? But we're progressing uh, that through P4S. Yeah. We've done P3S and all of that I've done without a single add-on. Mm -hmm. We need add-ons. Yep. The problem is if Square Enix allows this type of stuff, like this type of stuff here, become the norm, then there will be a time where your players will need add-ons. And that is going to be particularly negative towards their 
fan base that happened to play on console. Because yep. for those who don't know, 14 is both on PC and console. And you're not going to be able to install add-ons on console. It's just that simple. You, you can't do that. Um, and not to mention, I don't think Yoshi P wants to put himself in a situation where even if it was just on PC, your players are expected to install these add-ons to be able to perform because they'll have to design around these add-ons. And that is the biggest problem of the add-ons. But anyways, let's let's yep. take a look I at agree. Uh, this, this news report here. On game Massive three, agree. Uh, which says, Final Fantasy XIV squad gets world first rate clear, then Square Enix deletes their video. World's first Final Fantasy XIV team to beat the Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate Mission has been congratulated by having their video deleted by Square Enix. Over the weekend, the first team to beat the incredibly tough and unforgiving Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate and Final Fantasy XIV emerged. Square Enix and game director Naoki Yoshida briefly congratulated the team in a news blog post, but it now emerges that the YouTube video featuring the clear run has been DMCA'd by the developers. So, for so that's a problem. I guess that's why. Uh... Yeah, so here's the congratulations. But here's something they would like to add about the third party tool. So please read our next tweet. In my opinion, if they're going down this route, they probably should have gave all of them. Uh, and I'm, I'm not advocating that they actually should have done it. But in, in how they're treating it, they probably should have went and banned every single one of the people that they could confirm were using add on just for like a few days to like make a point for starters there's one thing here that i am going to give uh square enix creative business unit 3 whoever the fuck made the decision to use the dmca <laughs> system i'm gonna give them shit i'm gonna give them yes. shit. that is not right yeah that that's just the DMCA... not right <laughs> to take a video down based on dmca when they haven't broken copyright because apparently people are saying that, again, I don't know the reason why they did it. Technically, they have broken copyright. Technically, they have. The problem with the DMCA is that you have one DMCA on your video now, and that's a problem. If they could just like take it down without giving the DMCA, that would be better. I mean, technically, they, I think they shouldn't have taken it down. They're just like... I think it would be better for all parties involved to just ban the player for a duration. But I'm assuming, considering that Square Enix has a very open policy when it comes to streaming their games, otherwise I would not be able to stream, right? Because I stream selective policy. All the time. You know, like I'm streaming remixes of their music right now. You guys can hear it on stream. Yeah. Hopefully it's not overbearing, by the way. Then... They can DMCA Rurikon for that. They just don't because they're not like they're not uh quantum <laughs> not quantum so they don't but they can if they really want to really test the also it's that's a, a great remix better. i'm gonna, gonna reduce a little bit sorry about that guys i was distracted growing pains of the new setup and all that but as i was saying it's like you should never ever ever dmca a video unless it actually breaks copyright which i don't think that the video in question breaks copyright because it's gameplay. Now, the problem is this is the fastest way of taking down a video on YouTube. That's why. But it's still copyright abuse. So it at is. the end of the day, my stance on that is going to stand firm. It's like, sure, take the, the world first from them if that's the decision that you want to make. And, you know. I mean, how do you take it? It's not like it's a title. Like. Like, okay. ban the players do whatever the hell you want because they were using third party tools or whatever do whatever the hell you want with that but dmcaing a video on youtube big no no a thousand percent disagree for me a thousand percent disapproval no you do not dmca a video unless there's a copyright an actual copyright problem which is not the case to give you guys an idea i still have unresolved not DMCA takedowns, but content ID problems of people basically stealing revenues for my videos because of the fact that the system is so easy to abuse. And I yeah, really don't that's like why you just get uh, uh, you know publishers abuse. Yeah, this. don't don't like I'm not I'm not a pro or anything. Like that. I have like no viewers, but in my opinion, if I ever do have viewers, uh, my main source of income it should not I should not aim for YouTube being my main source of income. I would Patreon uh coffees whatever it's called buy me a coffee kind of thing 
um, just Twitch Labs, like those ones is where I would like uh, ideally get most of my money. YouTube is just extremely fickle, and that's I think the problem right now with Uber Danger. Uh, I saw a video that's like not like his video got demonetized, even though it was like super uh, family friendly and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, man, like kids are not the ones who are gonna pay for your stuff. It's their parents, and parents are adults. So just make videos for like, you know, grown ups and like hopefully they tip you if you're good enough and whatever. Just keep promoting your Patreon or some shit. I don't know. But uh yeah, counting on YouTube for money is really problematic right now because of all these problems like what he's just described and DMCAs. Because you know, you push this too far and eventually what's gonna happen is creators are not gonna want to stream your game. Like, this to me is a big knock. And again, this isn't even related to the topic at hand. I just need to bring that up because the MCA is a very big deal for me. Anyway, uh, the first teams to clear Dragon Songs for Prize Ultimate have emerged. Congratulations for those of you who are still progressing. Good luck as you continue pushing at your own pace. We'd like to add something about third party tools. So please, please read our next tweet. Let me actually look at that. We noticed that some discussions about the validity of third-party tools and would like to reiterate our stance against the usage of such tools. Yes, you check the following statement of producer and director, Naoki Yoshida. Thank you. We'll be checking that out after we, we get through this. The timing of the clear in Square Enix's blog post railing against third-party software can't be overlooked. Right now, it's not yet clear why the YouTube video has been taken down by Square Enix. But one popular community theory, which has credence in the post decrying third-party tools, is that the team are using software to manipulate the game's UI. If you're unaware, modding Final Fantasy XIV's UI via third-party software isn't actually that uncommon, and teams trying to be the first to clear a tough challenge, like Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate will install software, which tells them which way to run to dodge certain boss mechanics in the mission for example this helps the team but it's in direct violation of the rules laid out by square enix now here's something that you need to understand okay before i have something to say about that but we need to go through the rules in final fantasy 14 and to like see where it is eight eight, eight minutes okay that run the raid the, yeah. this is not like world of warcraft where shit people. gets on the ptr and then they wait until top Top tier guilds clear the content and give them feedback on how hard it was and all that shit. And then they do the adjustments as they watch as these world first guilds take on the content. In Final Fantasy XIV, there's an actual team of people that test this shit out and they run the raid to make sure that it is clearable. Right? So it's just a matter of trial and error, trial and error, trial and error until you get it right. That's what is expected uh, of people to do. So considering that the raid is clearable, you don't need these tools. You do not need these tools to clear this content. The reason people do it is because it makes it easier. Yeah. It just makes the content easier to do because you get warnings in advance letting you know, okay, this thing's happening, that thing's happening, the other thing's happening. And now that there there also comes a discussion which will We'll be talking about later, which I saw on Reddit, of people saying, well, Discord is also a third-party tool. And it's like, come on, this is humans communicating. It's like, come on. Yeah. Anyway. But again, like the whole Discord thing is like, it's more of a meme or a troll. It's not so much like people actually mean it. It's more like it's the wording of the terms of service that make people say it's Discord, even though everyone knows they don't mean Discord. But at the same time, if Square Enix ever decides to ban you for Discord, they're in the right to do so because it's technically a third party tool. It's the wording. It's not so much because like they consider Discord to be equivalent to like, you know, raid UIs. Besides the point, um, you know, I personally don't agree with people using add-ons that affect combat. This is the, the important distinction to make. Add-ons that affect combat. Add-ons that make combat easier. That is what I have a problem with. Per to what extent? Cooldown monitoring or buff monitoring? In my opinion, yeah, it makes the fight a bit easier. But in my opinion, that should be base UI. Being able to see the cooldown that you placed on the target, like again, like in the Xeno video where he shows, he put a buff on somebody and there's a timer when he clicks the person, but when he doesn't click the person on the party UI, it doesn't show the timer on it. And I think that's not a good design. I think that should be improved. And that's why the add-on is using it. But that's also improving combat, right? 
having something like P combo, one of my favorite add-ons, makes it is a, a like what's it called? It is a, a combo add-on, but at the same time, it saves me like ten buttons on the samurai, right? And it's not even a question of misclick. It's more like it's just uncomfortable at that point of having that many buttons to push at a specific order when you know this is the order anyways you might as well be able to push some of it in like less buttons like it doesn't make any sense to me why doesn't uh uh oni gaku or whatever it's called why doesn't automatically turn to the other thing uh to the uh instant cast one why doesn't automatically do that why doesn't my uh shifu turn automatically to the next one right it's like all these like not shifu shifu is the buff but it's like you have the one two three combo. You have the one two combo for one seal. You have one two three. You have no, three four five for the other seal. Then you have shift one, shift two, shift three for the third seal. It's like why do I need to have these like no? Well, actually, it was like one shift one, one two three, and one shift two, shift three. These are my three seals. It's like why do I need six buttons instead of just three buttons? It makes no sense. All right? You know I'm gonna click this next. Like it doesn't. Like why would I have three fucking Six buttons, three eight buttons more. Like that's making sense. Personally, uh, you know, it, to each their own. Do whatever you want. But the fact of the matter is, Square Enix's stance on this is that add-ons. Period. Like blanket statement, you shouldn't be able to use them. And also, here's what you like. If you want to play an MMO, here's the other thing. Let's say you only have a keyboard and a regular mouse, right? Do you think I have an advantage over people who don't have this kind of mouse? I think I have a big advantage of people don't have this kind of mouse because I can macro three, actually four different abilities just to this one button. I have this button, shift this button, control this button, and alt this button for four different abilities. I have an advantage. This is a third party tool. I have a massive combat advantage. So, again, to what extent are we talking about like affecting combat? I agree. Um, anticipating uh, incoming abilities of the boss, in my opinion, shouldn't be. You should learn the boss as it is. Um, having a warning telling you where to go uh, is not a, a good add-on for the game, right? But something like P combo, in my opinion, pretty good fucking add-on. Not necessarily agree with that. I think ACT just in terms of tracking your damage. Is fine because I can I can tell you right now I've improved a lot as a player by being able to check and experimenting with different rotations and you know different timings on some of my abilities. Here's the thing. This is why, like he says, and that's true. The only thing is there is not so much an ACT in the game, but there is a way to check your damage for a specific boss. If you can do enough damage for that boss, means you're good enough to go. Right, so learning your rotation stuff like that. So there's two things you can do in Final Fantasy that you don't need to uh, ACT for. One, learning your rotation. Go on Discord, go through your class uh, guide on the whatever the Discord is called, the balance, I think. Find your class, find your job, find your uh, uh, cooldown speed. This is the rotation that you're using. This is your opener, and then this is the whole rotation. Get used to clicking that order, okay? After that, all you got to do is make sure that once you are comfortable with your rotation, go on to the NPC, whatever, wherever he is. I think it's Radzat Han right now. Talk to him. Go. No, he's not Radzat Han. He's at the other place and the, in the village outside Radzat Han. Um, go to him. Uh, do the training dummy for a specific boss and see if you have the damage. If you don't, you don't. If you do, you do. And that's it. Like, you don't really need ACT for that regard to know that you're doing more damage. It's mostly get comfortable with your class and then see that your gear is high enough to execute this rotation properly to kill the boss. Then it's learning the boss mechanics and when you can actually use your abilities properly. Uh, you don't really need ACT for that, in my opinion. The only thing you really need ACT for is w one to show off your numbers. That's a streamer thing. Uh, two parsing. That's a, you know that's an everyone thing that uh, has a massive ego and needs to parse. Uh, and uh, three to kick the people who are bringing the group average down. Uh, using the the logs provided by ACT, I'm not necessarily against that, but I am a thousand percent against. Whenever the add-on just straight up tells you, 
this ability is about to happen. Yes, I don't 100%. Like that. If I don't like that. telling you, you should run to the left. It's like, no, I want to look at the situation and figure out where I'm supposed to go. Yes. Like, for instance, before us, there's a, a point at which... Windows is a third-party software. Says, North something... I forget what the name of the thing, but it basically tells you a cardinal point, and that means the boss is going to move to that cardinal point and do an ability. Here's what it is. This is what, this is what the problem was. The video showed act... Max sound callouts, death recap, party buff, debuff timers, and something else. And I would say the the biggest part of this is the video showed. It's not having all these add-ons. It's that the video showed it. So you have to look at the ball. Like, okay, think about this way. If you're a normal, if you're a regular player, right? And you're like, man, I want to go and do this ultimate, right? And then you look at the top tier players, the ones who are really clearing it, the ones who are like, you know, like the first ones there, and they're all using add-ons. What what are you supposed to think as a regular player? Man, I better get these fucking add-ons if I want to clear this. Us and see if his cloak is glowing or if his rapier is glowing, because that means even that, the best players are using it, right? Attack, which is a knockback, or a rapier attack, which is a slashing attack and requires you to position yourself on the side of the boss. So you need to know that, and you also need to actually look at the map and figure out, okay, yeah. which direction is north? North is this way. i got to go north, and I have to go north, and you either have to stand in front of the boss if he's doing the knockback, or you have to stand on the side of the bosses if he's doing the rapier, and all of that requires you to basically look at the boss, look at which part is glowing, look at the map, yes. see which direction you have to move to, also look at which ability is being cast before that, because there's going to be an ability being cast. It can either be spread, stacked, whatever, so that you know what you're doing immediately after the boss does that. And also, after he performs all these abilities, there's a tank swap that we have to do. So I'm also going to have to instantly, after all these things are resolved, tank swap because I need to take a tank buster for the other tank. And I think it's cool for you to figure out all of those mechanics and apply all those mechanics when it could be extremely simplified by an add-on basically shouting the following words north rapier stack like if the add-on would just tell you these three words it would simplify the taunt. thing to the point where i don't oh, yeah. have to look at the boss i don't have to look at the map well i still have to look at the map to figure out north or whatever but it's like i don't have to look at the boss i don't have to look at which ability is being cast i don't have to pay attention i don't have to figure out which square is safe to stand in i don't have to do any of that because the add-on I know someone would would be like saying it's like callouts and damage meters are bullshit. Okay, <laughs> live callouts, right? It's like, oh well, what's the problem with having this add-on if you have live callouts by the raid leader? Eh, it's a bit different. Like, there's a human error, there's a delay, you know, the like that the, the add-on doesn't have. It's like, yeah, there's a big difference. I'll just be like north, rapier, stack, or north, rapier spread like you can't deny that this fundamentally changes the dynamic of the fight i'm saying and that's why i personally have a problem with this situation it looks like this group was using something like that something like this i'm assuming because i didn't actually see the video but it seems that that is what people are talking about and that again in my opinion he was not banned for having these he was banned for showing them that is the discussion being had so let's take a look at what Yoshi P says in regards to that. Hello, this is Naoki, Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV with the release of Patch 6.11 and Dragon Song Surprise Ultimate. We've heard concerns from players about the use of third-party tools and the potential for game server emulation. Okay, so this is something that I've heard. I don't know how this stuff, you know, what people are doing with this stuff, but what I've heard is that people are, like, running private servers to test out you know to like make their characters be god mode and then just see the whole fight so that they can figure out the mechanics ahead of time and then apply it to live uh, i've touched on these topics previously in live letters but it's like i don't know if that's the case or not that's my interpretation of like when they're talking about potential game server emulation yes but uh, apparently that's actually this is terrible because say for instance right you have two teams that are running the ultimate and one of the teams just goes ahead and emulates the server god modes the fight figures out all of the abilities that are going to be happening throughout the fight whereas the other team is figuring out the fight as they go along like th this isn't even a race this is somebody on a motorcycle and somebody else on a fucking wheelchair 
This is the, the comparison between these two teams b- due to their different approaches. Now, I'm not someone that's going to be going for these races and whatnot because, A, I'm not skilled enough. It's just that simple. And, B, I don't have enough time to put into the game yep, to do that. Yeah, that's... Uh... But if I was, I think I'm skilled enough. I just really don't have the time. Interested in going in blind and doing, well, so is... If someone can sponsor me, and like set up the the extra the other seven people, yeah, I'll probably probably be able to do it. No problem. Yeah. This is essentially the, the 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 same situation that again I got away from, which was bosses would be shown on PTR, which is a public test realm, which is essentially they would test out the bosses in the public test realm. We just call it on Discord, but it's hard sometimes because uh, Rui, I'm guessing Rui, is rambling about some stupid shit nobody cares some about most of the time. Fight against the bosses before they were released into a live environment, so the fights would be figured out. This is the eternal discussion about MMOs being figured out before they actually release, which is yeah. it's just a bad thing. Because like, where's the sense of adventure if everybody already knows what is happening? In the case of World of Warcraft, I if don't you think mind about it. it like, where's the but sense of I could have been conditioned, in World I don't of Warcraft know. if you can basically go to WoWhead and see literally everything about the game before the game even releases? You can see all of the quest lines. You can see all of the loot. You can... You already have guides explaining to you what is the best way to min-max your character before the game even releases. Like, where's the fun in that? Where's the sense of adventure? Where's the unknown? Like, what... What kind of gaming experience are we having now? That I mean, here's the thing. This is the this is I would say the problem is uh, it's more of an MMO single player type uh, problem. If like if we put into like Elden Ring type of scenario, in Elden Ring the exploration was like by far one of the best things. Like not knowing where anything is and exploring and finding out cool shit, I think was one of the best things in Elden Ring for the first week. After the first week. You want to know everything and it's like, or like the guides are out there. So you're obviously going to look at them. The problem with uh, MMORPGs and overall, like just like online gameplay, you want to go for the best, like right away. You want to know everything. And it's not like, there's no like sense of like adventure, sense of like exploration. You want to know where the exploration is in the MSQ. That's all the exploration you're actually doing in uh, Final Fantasy. After the MSQ, after all the story, like when you do the Allied raid, you do the story and like you care about the story, that's the exploration. You don't give a shit uh, if like about anything else at that point. You don't, After that point, you want to know where do I get the best in slot, what's the easiest way to gear up. I want to get as many characters relevant as possible because I want to do some content or I want to get certain appearances, right? And in my opinion, appearances is the end game regardless. So I don't really agree with him. The sense of exploration in MMOs is pretty much over and done with. The only time you get sense of exploration in any game is when it's completely new. Not a new expansion. A new expansion, no one gives a fuck about exploration. You want, like, Ashes of Creation, everyone's going to explore everything. People are going to level so fucking slow. There will be some who are, like, rushing to max level because they don't care and want to see what the end game is. But man, people are going to take their time exploring, going through everything, at least for the first half levels, and then they might be sick of it, be like, ah, there's nothing to explore, fuck it, rush to endgame, right? Uh, New World had the same thing. People were having so much fun, up to 30, because they didn't even notice that they're leveling, and they're like leveling really slowly, but it's, it's fun, they're exploring the game. Man, after 30, you start noticing how slow you're leveling. Why? Because you, there's nothing to explore. Like, ah, I figured out the game, kind of. Eh, eh, whatever, right? There's no, like, actual secrets. It's like, oh, this is a cave, has a chest. Ah, this is this. I seen this mob, I know what it does, right? And it's like, there's no sense of, like, mystery anymore in the game. And the reason 30 to 60 feels so slow, aside from, like, requiring more experience pretty slow, is because you don't have distractions anymore. You're just focusing on leveling up, and when you focus on leveling up, it like, it's just not as fun. ...where it's like, the game is figured out, we're just executing. It's like, dude, if the game's already figured out, why the fuck am I playing it? Why, got- why are you playing it? You're playing Final Fantasy, the game is figured out. Uh, actual question like a, a lot of us in i don't in agree my static group we we go through the raids and we don't look up guides unless you know let's say we've we've spent two three months going through a boss it's like okay 
clearly we, we're not figuring this out by ourselves. Let's go look at a guide or whatever. But we, we at least put in the effort for quite a few prog. I'm totally fine with going in blind for a few runs. But honestly, after a few, like let's say one night of blind prog, next night, dude, no way blind prog. Like that shit is not it. Like blind prog is fun and all, but uh, like for a very short time. You can I can't do blind prog for a long time. I am totally down going blind prog. I I think we went blind prog for all of normal, obviously. Um, as far as like the savage stuff, um, like I think I went in blind for the first boss. Uh, even though my raid the. Uh, did look a guide. I went in blind for the first boss. Second boss, I didn't go in blind. And third boss, I didn't go in blind. I would never killed the third boss because, like, we just had some people who were just, like, not willing to put in the effort and kind of, like, fell apart there. And I didn't even bother with uh, clearing it because um, I just don't care that much, like, once I've seen it. Um, the challenge, again, when the challenge is the party, like, party in the finding the party and not the bosses, uh, it kind of turns me off. Um, but, um, yeah, what I was saying, yeah, so, in my opinion, like, blind prog are fun, are fun, and, like, it's, but unless you have all the time in the world, man, like, no, I want to get that shit done, like, you know, because, again, you might be figuring it out, and you might try to explain to your friends, but they don't understand shit unless there's a good guy in front of them and actually telling them what the fuck to do and i don't find that fun when you already figured everything out you know exactly what you need to do and these potatoes are still running circles around themselves and don't understand what they need to do man what look look at a fucking guide man i'm done <laughs> like i don't want to explain shit to you sessions to but i'm not a party i guess i'm not a group player try to come up with strategies by ourselves and that is the that is the adventure part of the mmo is figuring out things by yourself as you are experiencing no. it. No, that's the adventure part of the RPG, not the MMO. The MMO mentality is, in my opinion, way different. My, in my opinion, MMO is two things. One, completionist. Uh, two, competitive. Right? You either want to be the best, like you want to be competitive in your pvp you want to be competitive in your pve and you want to look the coolest because you have someone to show it off to that's it and nothing else matters you want to have bigger numbers let's say this do you care how big your number is if no one is there's no one there to see it maybe a tiny bit at most but like not really right if you can kill everything does it matter if you one shot it or you like it takes you 10 hits it's gonna die anyways it doesn't take that long and it's not that hard then would you try to be the best if like there's no competition no you wouldn't like you wouldn't care right like you don't have to be the best the only time you want to become the best is when you go online and you see what other people are doing it's like oh fuck man these guys are better than me oh fuck they're just one-shotting this boss oh fuck so this is how you do it easily right that's like literally it's like once you see other people do stuff that's when you become competitive you don't even have to have other people know that you exist to be competitive with them you just see someone does something better you're like no man i'm better than this guy fuck that i'm gonna use his technique but i'm gonna use it even better than him yeah. or you some know? shit like that where it's clear we're both old the real problem is people don't like to communicate that, that's I really don't like that 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 approach because, like, I mean, this, this I don't is a so. doomer approach. And I know that I sometimes it's take true, it but say, I don't... Oh, maybe I'm just too old. Maybe it's <laughs> to an extent, it's true. I hate that. I I wish that things would, you know, people would learn to just enjoy things again. But I've touched on these topics previously. I really enjoyed Elden Ring. You know why? Because there was like, I wasn't put in an environment where I'm competing against other people. You can't like I can't enjoy to that extent. Like let's say this: if I'm doing a savage and my group is so slow at figuring out mechanics, and I know other groups are doing this like first or second try because they're not potatoes, I am not having fun. Just from that aspect, I am not already not having fun just from that aspect. The boss might be fun, right? But I'm already losing some fun just knowing that other people are clearing this way easier than me. Not because they're better players, because they have a better group. That doesn't feel good, but 
take Elden Ring. The only one I have to blame is myself if the boss kills me. It doesn't matter if I'm cheesing the boss or I'm finding... Like, I'm not saying, like, I, I played no summons on the first run. Obviously, I did summons for the uh, New Game Plus because I was like, yeah, okay, I get I get the point. Whatever, like, I just want to get over with. Um, but yeah, no summons on the first run. I got, and it's like, it's cool. And yeah, people were already on, like, New Game Plus 6 at that point, but I didn't know and didn't care, right? And by the time I found out about it, like, bro, I'm like, I'm already like just chilling, you know, I'm just trying new things, making new characters. I can't do it in an online environment. It's pretty, like, it's not that it's impossible, but it's like, it's very unlikely. You rarely play for yourself in an online environment because you have live competition. When you play a single player game, you, pl you actually play it really for fun, right? For me, the most fun I've had in Final Fantasy is the stories, right? And some of the rating. And like leveling, it's like mini completionist. But as far as like the high end content, it's really not that fun because figuring shit out has never been the problem. The problem is how slow my team is in figuring shit out. We've seen live letters, but I would like to take this opportunity for That's not fun. Listen, please note that this will be a lengthy post containing difficult technical terminology and may not be of interest to the average player. Moreover, this announcement is meant to be read in its entirety, so I ask that you please refrain. Refrain. Just go and read on the comments. See, I'm of the mind that if people don't like to communicate, then they shouldn't be able to clear a fight. Why? If everyone knows what the fuck they're doing, you don't need to communicate. There's honestly, there's absolutely, like, I'm not talking about, like, an ultimate there you might need to. So honestly, if everyone knows the fight and, like, knows exactly where to go at what moment, you probably don't need to communicate at that point either. But, for as far as the savage fights go... Dude, if you know exactly what your job is in that moment in time in the fight, and everyone's on the same page, they know exactly what they need to do, there's absolutely zero reason to communicate. In all of the fights I've seen Final Fantasy so far, there's absolutely zero need to communicate. If everyone knows what the fuck they're doing, there's no need to communicate. Same with WoW. If everyone knows what the fuck they're doing, there's no need to communicate. The problem is, most people... And this is why I hated raiding in WoW, especially Mythic. In Heroic, it was kind of like, okay, because like people don't really even need to know what they're doing. It's kind of like troll. Uh, it's like, it's that easy. But in Mythic Prague, man, one player that doesn't know what he's doing, everyone dies. That's not fucking fun. And having the raid leader be so focused on uh, talking about what the mechanics are, what the job is, calling people out to do a certain mechanic is really fucking annoying. Or, this is the worst part, I think, when uh, there were certain mechanics where it was like uh, multiple soaks, and you would see two people running for the same soak. Look, here's my common sense. Whoever is closer gets it. That's it. Common sense. I was here first, it's my spot, you go to the next one. And that's it. Or if there's like one, let's say one is here and one is here, like, okay, one's here, one's here, and you're both running from this side, whoever is first will go to the second one. So this one can stop here and this one will keep going, right? But it's like, again, these are common sense things. Like, there's, in my opinion, not a lot of reason to communicate there. The only time that you need to communicate is when people are fucking potatoes and they don't understand. It's like, hey, man, this spot needs only one soak because. It will put a debuff that you can't soak after. But then you have you, one more or two more people get into the same uh, circle. And you were first there. And it's like, bro, I was here first. I am not the one moving. And, but they also stay there for some reason. Like, well, I thought you would move. Dude, I was here first. Get the fuck out. You're going to get the next one. I don't care that you lost DPS running here. That's not, like, that's not the point. Brain from sharing excerpts of this text out of context. Oh, wow. You should be already expecting people to quote him out of context. Use a third-party tool. Stay Where is it? Oh. So I ask that you please refrain from sharing excerpts of this text out of context. In oh, terms yeah. Of oh, obviously. 14, the use of third-party tools. Honestly, you don't, need, you don't need to take it out of context because a lot of it is so general that it's like it's already out of context by itself. Players who are determined to be using third-party tools will have their accounts suspended or permanently banned for repeated offenses. Yes. We have received requests from players at... As I've said in the Xeno video, this is this is the biggest one. Any actions or public statements that promote use of third-party tools. This is where they prioritize their bans. 
by far. Asking that we define what tools aren't aren't permissible, but to do so would require an assessment of all third party tools available on the internet as well as all gaming devices and their functionality. Unfortunately, such an undertaking is physically impossible, which is why we decided to simply prohibit the use of all third party tools and software. See, I I disagree a little bit here. I feel like there could be a stance. The problem is naturally this has to go through legal and legally, you know, it has to be super well defined. But I kind of feel like if we let's just put our reasonable hats on, if we can all just be reasonable, I think it's very easy for us to define what is OK and what is not OK. Yes, I think anyone with a bit of common sense, which is not too common, but just a little bit of brain power can figure out what this means to. The problem is, uh, and this is what Zeno was really raging about, the problem is that the way it's defined is that if they, let's say, don't like someone, they can just bend them outright. It's like having policies in, like, in politics. You have a policy that sounds good on paper, right? It sounds good, but because it's so broadly general, generalized, you can punish people just because you don't like them and say like, oh yeah, it falls under this, uh, this uh, what's it called, under this juncture, whatever, like under this uh, terms of service for <laughs> for your uh, life. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> forgot name. Under this law, under this rule, it falls under this, right? And it's like, wait, but this is not what you meant. It doesn't matter what I meant when I wrote it. What matters is what it implies when uh when you do something and i don't like it that's all it is the problem here is this is so broad that they can basically ban you for anything if they don't like you right now yoshi p if he really wants to i know he won't he doesn't he probably doesn't even want to ban anyone but let's say yoshi p leaves this is the biggest problem if yoshi p leaves and the next uh the next guy who's in charge is a fucking asshole right and like he just doesn't like rurikan right he just doesn't like him and like he hears that Rurikan is using Discord in the background. Yo, fuck, bent this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. He doesn't belong in my game. I don't like this motherfucker. I don't want him here. But I need justification. Oh, use of tools that allow players to more easily complete content. Discord, voice chat. Yep, yeah, that helps him uh, to complete content easier. Yeah, fuck this guy. He's out. Right? That's, that's the problem with uh, how they define the terms of service. It's too broad and too general. And I know if you use common sense, you know exactly what they mean. But the problem is, it's like, what if they themselves want to take it out of context later? There's nothing you can argue here. They can. So if you want to use G-Shade to change the way that you view the game, I kind of feel like that's fine. If you want to use ACT to call out boss abilities as they're happening... Kind of feel like that's probably not okay. Just going to throw that out there. If you want to use ACT to call somebody out on having bad DPS, I think that's obviously not okay. It's about being reasonable. It's about like anything that can essentially affect uh, the how the difficulty of a fight should not be allowed. Any third-party tool that affects the difficulty of a fight should not be allowed. And ACT catbot like this thing clearly affects the difficulty of a fight. I don't think anybody can tell me that, oh, that doesn't affect the difficulty of the fight at all. Are you, you sure about that? <laughs> I mean, you got timers for everything. Are you crazy? Like you got the add-on literally telling you where you're supposed to go. You have a, a countdown timer for... Bro, I love it. It even says late pull. It probably also says early pull. So you can literally like flame your tank for early pulling or someone else. Everything that the boss is going to do. Right? You know? So that's the... That's my thought on that, pretty much. Um, so again, I, I feel like they could define it as in tools that direct, directly impact the difficulty of encounters are not allowed. Anything that directly impacts the difficulty of an encounter is not allowed and therefore deleted. You know, people get banned, whatever. You want to, like, you know, make a character naked, do some crazy shenanigans <clears> as you go <throat> down the road of ERP, whatever, so long as it's being done by consenting adults, you do whatever the hell you want. But 
you know, I think that there are some clear Good luck with that, that one. You can define <laughs> Good luck with that one. It's impossible for us to check which programs are installed on every player's PC. This is why we cannot identify and recommend the offenders 100% of the time. To offer more clarity in our process, here are a few examples of rule violations we prioritize the investigation. Use of tools that allow players to more easily complete content. Exactly what I said. Exactly what I said. And I 100% agree with them on this. I 1,000% agree with them on this. And I think they should most yeah, definitely. You agree with them based on the context. Because listen, and trust me, I know that there's a lot of people that are upset out there right now. Trust me, you do not want this to become the norm. Uh, Take it from someone who's been on the... Again, based on the context, I pretty much agree with all of this. But it's when it t it's taken out of context. And you can easily take it out of context because of the way it's defined. That's the problem here. The other side, you do not want this to become the norm. I agree. No, definitely you don't because want this to be the norm. eventually this gets to a point where the barrier to getting started in raiding is so high that raids will be developed for like 10% of your player base. Not even. Whereas right now, I would argue, you know, a great majority of the player base, if you want to do raids, like say on normal difficulty or whatever, anybody can go. Okay, that's that. what I mean. Yeah, okay. Once you allow third-party tools to become the norm... One second. All right, let's go back. You're to fucked. It. You're essentially just, you know, the encounters are going to have to be designed with these third-party tools in mind, and therefore they're going to have to make them harder and harder and harder and harder and harder to the point where, again, if you are not using these, you're screwed. I mean, just think about it like this. When you go into Party Finder, what do you usually see? You see people telling you, go watch this video. The next step of that is people telling you, go watch this video and install this add-on. That's the next step of, yeah, yeah, of where yeah. this is going to go. If you allow Let me spin this up because so a lot of it is like really kind of like repeating itself. And really just try to figure out if this is the direction that they want to go. And I'll tell you right now, if this is the direction we're going, I think that I'm just, okay, I'm, I guess I'm just done with MMOs. Like, that's it. I've been, I've been on the cusp of quitting on MMOs entirely, not just because of this, because of other reasons, but stuff like this, it's, it's taken me there, man. Modif modifications of the UI to display additional information, um, yep, that's another one. Use of packet spoofing tools. What the hell is this for? This seems like some hardcore cheating packet spoofing tools. Any actions or public statements that promote the use of third-party tools. And again, see, this is why people are that's, still not... This is the biggest one. This is the, by far the biggest one. Any actions that promote use of third-party tools. Streaming, you using add-ons, is what people are getting banned for. Now they're getting banned for using the add-ons. They're getting banned for showing that they're using the add-ons. That's the problem here. Posting it in their thing. If they allow this, people will be like, okay, make sure to install this add-on. That's going to make things easier, and we can just clear the content. All reports of such activity warrant investigation to counts determined to be in violation of the game service service will be suspended or banned unless there is a significant change to the terms of service, which would be publicly announced. This rule remains as is. Hacks, mods, and risk of infection from malicious software. Hacks are alterations of a program that can allow for otherwise impossible things to happen. The Final Fantasy XIV, which relies on server client communication, hacking is much more difficult than in other online games. More of our security measures are being improved upon constantly, and we will continue to bolster them in the future. Supplementary yep. tools known as mods, however, can do a number of things, such as display additional information set by the FF14 servers on screen, or send false packet information to change the location of characters. This is probably what they mean by packet spoofing tools. Yes. In the case of the latter, we have systems in place to automatically check and inspect system logs, allowing us to immediately take action against cheaters when discovered. Delete their accounts. If someone is caught using this, this isn't even like something that requires this investigation. This is hacks, straight delete up. Delete their accounts. Like, actually delete them. Like, make a public... Well, no, no, no. Investigate. Make sure that they're actually using it, and it's not like a problem in the system, like a lag or something that, like, didn't catch. Like, there was a, a, a packet loss or something, and then it's like you see a person just appear from one spot to the other, but if the person didn't do anything, he just actually moved. But on your end, it looked like he teleported. Yeah, obviously investigate that actually happened. And if it didn't, then don't delete the account. But if it did, yeah, ban, delete, fuck it. I don't like, uh, hardcore cheaters, like hackers and shit like that, fuck that. You don't want this in your game. Like it's just too much of a pain the has to deal with. Shoot their character in the face. In and the they ruined the game for everyone. just remove them from the community, just delete it, delete it. That's, that's just I'm totally fine with that. And, and, here's the, and here's the thing about this one, because 
People are like, oh, third-party tools, they're fine. And yet, when people are cheating on PvP, everybody's like, hey, man, that's not right. Hey, what the fuck, man? People are, like, automatically using limit breaks when I'm in kill range. Oh, I don't like that at all. Oh, I see how it is. So it's so it's not okay for people to cheat in PvP, but it's okay for people to use shit like ACT callouts and whatnot in PvE. Is it okay to use speed hacking in PvE? Because that's something that people have been doing in PvP. Like, where exactly are we drawing the line here? That is the problem, right? I mean, um, both anyway, are, on, are not okay. Is, uh, in short, the use of such tools will not allow players to automatically clear high-end content, yet carries a high risk of being penalized, so we ask that you refrain from using them. Receive many inquiries regarding infection by viruses and spyware that still yeah, passes yeah, 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 downloading yeah. third-party tools and plugins. Good, fuck you, lose your account. It did, if, if, <laughs> if I was somebody that was, like, working at consumer, you know, consumer support or something like that, and someone was like, oh, I downloaded this software, and it stole my password, now I can't access my account again. I'm like, <laughs> good. Pretty much. We didn't want you here anyway. Bye. Hang up on them. To keep your system secure, that's why I can't be working in customer service. To keep your system secure, we ask that you exercise judgment. Probably not. Yeah. Third party tools. I agree. <laughs> origins. Like, listen, this is them saying it's not our job to fix your fucking PC because you wanted to install a third party bullshit add on that made things easier for you. The game is perfectly playable as is. And it's but not I would say for this one, to keep your system secure, we ask that you exercise judgment and refrain from needlessly downloading third party tools or software of on an origin. They don't want. They don't give a shit about your system being secure. They just don't want to hear about it. Job to fix your shit after you fucked it up. Now that's pretty much what they're saying here in more polite terms. Yeah. In I don't want to deal with the shit. Violence, we believe that people use the aforementioned tools to expand the HUD and display more information because they feel that existing functions are insufficient for tackling yes. high-end duties. In recognition of this, we intend to review the most prominent tools and in order to discourage their use, endeavor to enhance the functionality of the HUD. Though it will take some time, we're determined to make it happen, not least for the benefit of those who play on consoles. Exactly. So here's the thing, in order to discourage their use, that means they're not even banning for the, for these things. They just want people not to use them, but they're not even banning for this. Again, they're banning for showing the hacks, uh, the, the mods, but they're not banning for the use of them. I mean, here's the thing. Out of all the things that I've done so far, which again, like I said, I'm currently progging P4S, the, the default UI is fine. But... There are plenty of issues with the UI. Is it doable? Yes. But there are plenty of issues. But I don't know ultimates. I haven't done ultimates, so I can't really pronounce myself on that. But, you know, them improving the UI, that's a good thing. High end duties and world races. It goes without saying that we're aware of world races for high end duties. As the, the, the main problem people have with this is like they would not be improving the UI and the HUD if uh, the mods weren't there. That's, that's the problem. In my opinion, they should hire the mods and the mods, or not, not so much hire, but it's like. They should make the mods aware that if they want to release a mod, like they should allow mods to an extent and then have the players that are making the mods uh, send the mods to the to the dev team for their approval. Hey, is this mod okay to be used? Yeah, get that green check mark and hopefully obviously there will be like an actual like fucking team that deals with it like ASAP and not like wait it out for another uh whatever another few months and it's like bro like uh, is this okay or not i'm just gonna fucking release it and like any mod that is not approved by them they delete and then they would have a list of approved mods and then it's like oh you can have these mods if you want developers were proud to have grown into one of the few games where they're held and it delights us to see so many players participate as well as spectate as well as spectate with great interest but a race should be fair and it's our earnest wish that participants don't use third-party tools indeed we've only released duties that have proven can be beaten with the game standard features this is the key thing they test this. They cleared it with a team. They cleared it with a team. Without a doubt, patch 6.11 Dragon Song surprises the hardest duty we've ever created. Some may compare it to the unending Coil of Bahamut, but taking into account our players' improved skill, the increased number of actions, and the more complex mechanics, this latest ultimate entry has the edge. To be able to conquer it in such a short time requires great individual prowess, teamwork, and support, and you can consider this gamer thoroughly impressed. Because such races are unofficial, we usually limit our involvement to some comments after a number of teams have cleared the duty by offering our congratulations via the official Twitter account and confirming timestamps. We want to recognize your achievements and cont contribute to the community excitement. However, if our recognition encourages excessive competition and controversy to the extent that players resort to third-party tools, I regret to say we may have to reconsider making comments in the future that's what you get data mining and screenshot leaks fuck that's it, fine fuck them like, all. i don't really have problems with that team's part model data for dragon songs reprise was present in patch 6.08 data bro my fucking damn man gilgamesh is like lit look at this three gilgamesh guys are at, like top of the crystalline conflict standings Oh, oh shit! Of the raid's final boss was made That's public. my main Such realm. Is normally massed and cannot be discovered, but this I'm itching my ass. Checks. Don't worry about. 
In addition, at virtually the same time the patch was released, the screenshot from phase that players had yet to reach was leaked. We believe it came from an insider and are in the middle of a thorough investigation. Fire this person from a cannon. We refrain from making this known earlier because it would make the investigation more difficult if the suspect were aware of it. Such leaks are utterly unacceptable for they not only undermine the efforts of the development and operation teams, but also take away from players' enjoyment. Not all players, but yeah, the players who this enjoyment doesn't take out away from don't care either way. The players that does, they care, so. True. Next subject. Previously, when a major leak occurred prior to the release of Shadowbringers, we succeeded in identifying the culprit and took legal action. There has been another leak despite this deep... That there has been another leak despite this is deeply concerning, and in addition to bringing the offender to account, we'll take measures to prevent a repeat of the situation. You're goddamn right, dude. Legal action. I 100% I agree with this. Hey, man, it is what it is. Now, be it graphical resources or something else, there may be legal ramifications for mining private data via illicit means with the intent to make it public. Perhaps due to high interest, however, we've been seeing websites that openly release mine graphical data. I mean, dude, just look at Wowhead, man. As a show of our admiration for those who clear ultimate raids, we designed their reward weapons to be as eye-catching as possible, and to widely spread their images outside of the game could diminish players' motivation to earn them. I've made this request before and make it again. Please refrain from disseminating mined data. Server emulation. The leaks outlined above have led some to speculate that groups yeah, yeah, they don't servers. have a... So the completely emulated ser servers and their... Yep, in yep, they don't have... Download the sure that will can... Servers. Okay. Not just long-time Final Fantasy 14 fans. It's at least good to see that they're taking this shit seriously. They're not messing around. Thanks for all the voted Warriors of Life. Final Fantasy 14 has grown into a titan among games. This means that it is now home to players from all walks of life. And not just long-time Final Fantasy 14 fans, but those who have recently come to join us from myriad other game communities as well. Many more eyes are on Final Fantasy 14, and boasting about it garners a great deal of attention, which has changed how information is shared online and spreads throughout the player base. This in mind, I'd like to encourage the development of a strong Final Fantasy 14 community by continuing to provide commentary as I have today. Truly, I cannot apologize enough for the many mistakes we made in 6.1, the resulting disappointment in such a major patch. Nevertheless, we intend to forge ahead so that Final Fantasy 14 can continue to bring joy to as many players as possible. We hope you stay with us on this journey. Forge ahead. One thing that was not addressed. The DMCA takedown, which I feel should have been addressed. Because like I said, I if mean, there is no copyright not infringement, they need to release the DMCA on that video. Like, I may not like what, what they've done, what they're doing with using third-party tools and whatnot, but my strong stance on the DMCA is the same. Yeah, they're not going to remove infringement. it. No, release the video, let them have the video public. It's that simple. I don't care. I don't care. Listen, I really don't care. I get that they don't want that footage shown, but guess what? The game was live. The add-ons were live. I would say the best course of action is like... Is a negotiation between releasing the DMCA and uh, them removing the video on their own because they don't want to see the add-ons on that video because that video is very popular right now, would be, uh, as the first clear ever, the nerdgasm, I guess, gets people going, but everyone would see all the add-ons that they were, they were using and they don't want that publicity for the add-ons. You didn't take action? They did this. And DMCAing, is, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't go that route. It's just that simple. It is just that simple. Now let me see what you guys have to say about this. Damage meter is a self-improvement tool. See, that's the thing. Damage yes and meters, no. I don't think that a damage meter will tell you, will affect the fight in a significant way. A damage Won't. meter affects self-improvement. That's why I'm not against damage meters. I think damage meters are fine. Damage meter while like, in the fight, meter is not, meh. Doesn't, by itself, the, just the damage meter functionality of it does not tell you when an ability is about to happen. It doesn't tell you where you should move when the boss casts ability X. It doesn't tell you any of these things by itself. It tells yeah. you how much damage are you outputting. As a matter of fact, I wish there was a built-in damage meter in the game. But I know they don't want to do that because, obviously, given the opportunity, people will be fucking toxic. Yep. But I don't think they should take a hard stance on the damage meter side of things. They I think not. they should take a hard stance on this side of things. Like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. It's that simple. This is bullshit. And if you need this, are you really raiding? Or is the, or is the, the add-on doing it for you? At which point does it stop being somebody raiding and starts being the, the add-on solving mechanics for you? You know? That's what I'm saying. Actually, this is a, this is a really good idea here. <clears throat> like, this one right here. To think all Square Enix really had to do is give us the in-game version of ACT exclusively for Savage, Extremes, and Ultimates. Yeah. Instead of having, like, a permanent DPS meter, just put it on Savage's Extremes and Ultimates. Because that is, in reality, the only time where the DPS meter matters. And the But you do have it. Like, isn't, like... I know it's limited, I get it, but it's, like, it's still... If you can see that your DPS is enough on the target dummy, you're good. Like... To some extent, not even an extreme that much. But Savage and Ultimates, sure. That's when DPS matters. So it's like, you don't need ACT to do your fucking expert roulette. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, but for Savage... I would say in Savage, it also doesn't matter as much. Like, if you... Like, you you, you would usually know... You, 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 you would actually know when, uh, you, like, you reached the uh, Enrage and, like, what you could have done better. Right, like mo like smoother moving throughout the mechanics, stuff like that. I don't think that is that big of a deal. Um, like we knew we didn't have enough DPS on 
uh, P3S when we couldn't kill uh, the second round of birds fast enough. It was pretty much simple as that, right? So it's like I don't like there wasn't much else to it. The birds were not dying fast enough. Uh, what used to happen is two of the birds would die, which like either my group or the other thing depends where the DPS was going, and the DPS was not adhering to splitting the DP to splitting properly the DPS. People were confused. You would have three DPS on one bird and then one DPS on another, and that like threw people off. What I think we should have done probably was stack the birds. Uh, tank takes one of the birds to the side, stack the birds, AOE them down, kill only one, and then like move the birds, kill one, move the bird, kill one, and then all the DPS switches to the last bird or something like that. Or like, well, if they're all very low, we can just like have three DPS go on the uh, fourth bird, and then one DPS stays and finishes off the last two birds or some shit like that. Village and ultimate, yeah, you kind of it's it's useful to have it. You don't you don't, again you don't need to have like it. that's it's how we could have played around our DPS for sure. But honestly, like let's just say a couple of our players were not very um, people I would like to deal with long term during raiding. Useful to have it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, like look, I understand. I've only been with the Final Fantasy fourteen community since like two thousand nineteen, which has been like three years. And I understand there's probably people, I don't know if in this chat or whatever, if in a, a video that potentially goes onto my channel, I don't know if um, if there's going to be people there that have been with the community for much, much longer. Wait, let me let me swap this. But uh, let me just tell you guys from my experience, as someone who came from World of Warcraft, you really don't want to see what happens when you go down this rabbit hole. When you go down the add-on rabbit hole, when you go down this rabbit hole over here, can I aim here? When you go down this rabbit hole, <laughs> yes, that one. you don't want to see where this rabbit hole leads. Because I've been down that rabbit hole, okay? I've been down that road. And I can tell you that this does not lead to a place that you're going to like. For no, starters, you're yeah, going to start this, alienating a huge part of your player base. I don't this know how is many, shit. what's the percentages versus people that play this, on The, the, the add-on mentality of like needing add-ons for fights, like certain specific add-ons that help with the fight, like dictate where to move and stuff like that. Yeah, there, this is obviously like fucking dog shit, and Final Fantasy should stay away from it as as far as possible and wow should like backtrack and like remove those add-ons like say they're like you're not allowed to use them um at all you have a one month to remove them from your system we will not be the zero tolerance on anyone who's using these add-ons and the bosses would uh, uh be a, um comparable to the skill level rather than the add-on level on pc versus um playstation i know i, I know you. ian uh is considering it like uh, from well I know it was a debate in the WoW dev, but again, well, I, I can't say I know. Ian said that it was a hot topic amongst the devs and how to go about it, but they currently don't have a solution because the problem is the how the add-ons work. But in my opinion, again, similar with the add-ons in Final Fantasy, I think that all the add-ons should go through Blizzard approval. Seal of approval, boom, you can use this. Everything else, nope, not allowed to use it, bannable. And like the add-on... Um, what do you call it? the add-on um, programs that like install like uh, Curse Forge and all that stuff? They install them should have like in the brackets this is bannable or not bannable. Some of that like Blizzard approved and not approved, something like that. That you're gonna get to a point where basically playing from PlayStation is not going to be viable to do Savage content if you keep using add-ons like this because the Savage content and Ultimate uh, content will have to take the add-ons into consideration. Uh, oh, it will have to take the good. add-ons into consideration, and therefore it will become harder and harder. For you to damn that really, <laughs> it'll become <laughs> the fuck you laughing. Yes, yeah, stunlock. As I was saying, it's like if you go down this road, and they have to develop the fights taking the add-ons into consideration, they're going to escalate the difficulty to the point to the point where it becomes inaccessible for players not using add-ons. It's that simple. For a majority of players not using add-ons, sure, there's going to be some giga chad brain out there. It's like I don't need add-ons. I'm like the guy from Rain Man. You can drop the box of toothpicks, and I'll tell you how many toothpicks are in there. Is yeah. that you know? That's the. That's crazy. That's the thing. And so eventually That's console players <laughs> console players will just straight up not be able to participate in that content. And I know that there's probably gonna be some people saying, Okay, dude, how many console players are actually progging Savage and Ultimate? And it's like Doesn't matter. Savage More. on my PlayStation 5. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Do you want them less of them? Like, savage, I might be seeing that any of these bullshit add-ons. Not a problem either. But yeah. it will eventually become a problem if you keep going down the rabbit hole. There's plenty of uh, console players so who cleared to ultimates too. Like it's not a... but yeah. I, I think you shouldn't go down. I don't think it's but, like you know, you guys, impossible. You guys I think it's like like really uncomfortable, but it's not impossible. Years. 
And if eventually it goes down that road and I feel like, hey, you know, maybe ratings just not for me anymore because everybody expects you to do this. It's like, I've done this. I've done this thing in the past. Yeah. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. You guys want to know, you guys want to know what the evolution of that is? Let me show you what bit. the evolution of that is, okay? Let me show you what the evolu evolution of that is, where that ends up. Oh, in. God. This is where you're headed. <clears throat> this is where you're headed, right? Nice. I love this it. This is the, the, the type of UI that you want to have with all wow. of the warnings and your aggro and all that bullshit. That's great. This is where you're headed right here, right? Raid control, wow. all these buffs and quests. There's a little bit of gameplay in the middle of this UI. And again, here, bit. same thing. Like, this... This one's actually pretty clean when you think about it. Yeah. This one's actually kind of all right. You can kind of see things a little that's bit. That's cleaner than mine. Yeah, oh my one, god, too. that's like, disgusting. Frames, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. This is what you're. This is what you're looking for. Okay? Really bad. This you don't need to like look at this. What is this? What is this? What is this? Like, why do you need six fucking DPS type meters? What are you're the healer? Fuck, do you care about uh, like like who cares? Absorbs and healing. You're number one. Healing done, which counts absorbs too. Like, well, you don't need any of this. I don't know what that is. You don't need this. You don't need this. Uh, this is like, this, in my opinion, is a really bad spot. I actually like it over here, down here. Um, like, it's so much easier to click. You can see a lot more stuff. Uh, this is fine-ish. Like, again, like, why does he have... He has his PvP buttons here as well. And actually, like it might not be PvP. Uh, yeah, okay, no one. It's BFA. But yeah, but it's like, oh, this is like holy shock, holy shock. Aura mastery, aura mastery. Illuminate, illuminate. Uh, divine shield, divine shield. What else? Freedom, freedom. Hammer, hammer. Uh, what's it called avenging wrath, avenging wrath. Uh, sacrifice, sacrifice. Bob, Bob. Like, why do you have? Double bars, like it doesn't make sense. Just make one bar, and then to so make this the bar, move all of this down, delete one bar, move it down, spread it out a bit. Like, oh, it's so messy. This, this is where you're headed. Oh fuck a that! I don't even know what this is. Like plastered all over your fucking UI. This is actually fine. Shit. This is where you're headed. Uh, oh my god, what is that? So I hope people, um, people what take the that fuck into account. Is that? Yeah, that was oh man. The Xenos one? New DOS I might get banned. Yeah, this is the Xenos. So they see Anyways, yeah. That, <laughs> that was the video by Rurikan. Uh again, a lot of stuff I already said in another video, but uh it's good to reiterate I guess. And uh I did uh he had some other takes that like were kinda interesting as well. Um but yeah, like my, my opinion overall is like you either Make make it clear what add-ons you want. Um, in my opinion, add-on teams should just have like a funnel through Final Fantasy that approves the add-ons, and if they don't, they don't, and that's it. Like I don't think it should be that complicated overall. Um, but yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll be right back.